<laughs> I grew up in the Soviet Union, but didn't have. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, check on. Check, second, second season. Yeah. We have some sexy, controversial questions. So you got uh, legends in uh, artificial intelligence: Ilya Sutskever and Andre Karpaty over there. Who's smarter? <laughs> just kidding, just kidding. You don't have to answer that. Nobody was about to. <laughs> he was thinking about it. I like it. Uh, no, just uh, so we're at MIT, and from here, with Max Tegmark and others, they put together this open letter to halt uh, AI development uh, for six months. What are your thoughts about the uh, this open letter? There's parts of the thrust that I really agree with. We we spent more than six months after we finished training GPT-4 before we released it. So taking the time to really study the safety of the model, to get external audits, external red teamers, um, to, to really try to understand what's going on and mitigate as much as you can, that's important. It's been really nice since we have launched GPT-4, how many people have said like, wow, this is not the most capable model of AI's put out, but like by far the safest and most aligned. And, unless I'm trying to get it to do something bad, I won't. Um, so that we totally, I totally agree with. Um, I also agree that as safety, as, as capabilities get more and more serious, the, the safety bar has got to increase. Um, but unfortunately, I think the letter is missing like most technical nuance about what's where we need the pause. Like it's actually what like OpenAI, an earlier version of the letter claimed that OpenAI is training GP5 right now. We are not normal for some time. Um, so in that sense it was sort of silly. But we are doing other things on top of GPT4 that I think have all sorts of safety issues that are important to address and we're totally left out of the letter. Um, so I think moving with caution and an increasing rigor for safety issues is really important. The letter, I don't think, is the optimal way to address it. But just a quick question for me, one more. Uh, is You have been extremely open, having a lot of conversations, being honest. Uh, uh, others at OpenAI as well. What's the philosophy behind that? Because compared to other companies, that are much more closed in that, in that regard. And do you plan to continue doing that? We certainly plan to continue doing that. Um, the trade-off is like we say dumb stuff sometimes, you know, stuff that turns out to be totally wrong. And I think a lot of other companies don't want to say something until they're sure it's right. Um, but I think this technology is going to so impact all of us that we believe that engaging everyone in the discussion, putting these systems out into the world, deeply imperfect though they are in their current state, so that people get to experience them, think about them, understand the, the upsides and the downsides, it's worth the trade-off even though we do tend to embarrass ourselves in public and have to change our minds with new data frequently. Um, so we're going to keep doing that because we think it's better than any alternative. And a big part of our goal at OpenAI is to like get the world to engage with this and think about it and, and, and gradually update and build new institutions or adapt our existing institutions to be able to figure out what the future we all want is. Uh, so that's kind of why we're here. So we only have a few minutes left, and I have to ask you 